So Kamala Harris's state operations director, Kelly Mellenbacher, actually just resigned. The New York Times got a letter from her on November 11th, and I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of snippets as to what she said and kind of what we can take from this. So first things first, Kelly Mellenbacher says, quote, this is my third presidential campaign and I have never seen an organization treat its staff so poorly. Another quote, it is not acceptable to me that we encouraged people to move from Washington DC to Baltimore only to lay them off with no notice, with no plan for the campaign, and without thoughtful consideration of the personal consequences to them or the consequences that their absence would have on their remaining staff. Later in the article as well, Mellenbacher talks about how the campaign hired a bunch of staff, then sent them to Baltimore, which is what she was just talking about, and then fired them. These people were literally hired have these opportunities to change your life and then finally they can be somebody and they now have an entrance into the political system and then bam, they're fired. That is some cold-blooded shit. I can't believe that actually happened. Well, I lied. I can believe that happened and that is a big problem with this. In addition to all this stuff too, Kelly Mellenbacher was talking about the fact that they don't even have a strategy for Iowa yet. Iowa is the very first state to start voting and that's February 3rd, it's November 30th right now. That's coming up here pretty soon. Generally speaking, when you have a state, especially Iowa, that's literally the first, you start a strategy from near the beginning, way back, months and months and months ago, not right now. And so you kind of have to wonder like, well, hold on a second. So you're a stone cold, unempathetic killer that doesn't care about people to the point where somebody who's worked for three campaigns is now resigning, you don't even have a strategy. Like how far are you actually planning on going with this? How serious are you going to be with all of this? Now let's actually look at how she's doing in Iowa as of now. According to Real Clear Politics, who averaged the hundreds of polls taken so far up to the race, Kamala is only polling at about 3.3% in Iowa and 3.8% nationally. Granted, you could say, well, hold on a second, you can't really trust the polls because you don't know what kind of a demographic they're pulling towards and also they didn't predict Trump coming. All of that is true, fair, but she's in fifth place. She doesn't have a strategy and her state operations director just quit. The American people don't want her. They don't even like her. I would predict that she's probably only gonna last until I would say probably after Iowa and then she's probably going to quit. That's my guess especially as somebody who never lost a race up to this point. I mean, she's the attorney general in California. She's never lost before, fun fact, and now she's getting her ass beat. And you can't really feel too bad for her either. I mean, there's reasons why the American people don't support her. She doesn't stand for anything specific. She has a lot of contradictions throughout her career. I mean, let's just kind of list some stuff off. And this, a lot of this is when she was the attorney general. So just keep that in mind. But I mean, she created programs that help people find jobs instead of placing them in prison. But at the same time, she fought to keep people in prison after they were proven innocent. There is a situation where there's this man who was convicted of um, murdering, I think it was his friend, and uh, he went to San Quentin prison. He was shanked. The appeals court jumped in, said that he didn't commit the murder, and then Kamala put him back into prison because of the fact that she said he was late with his paperwork. He was wrongfully convicted, and then he went back in to prison because of paperwork? Because he was late with it? My God, like, Jesus. And a lot of that reason too was because of the fact that it would mess up her stats as attorney general and then that would go towards her and that would hurt her career endeavors. And so she really threw him under the bus because of her failures and the failures of her team. So let's just keep listing this stuff off. I mean, another one was she didn't pursue the death penalty for a man who killed a police officer, yet she fought to keep the death penalty in California. Just a complete contradiction to herself. She created training programs to address police officers' racial biases, but she resisted calls to get the office to investigate police shootings that may have been racially motivated. Again, a little bit of a contradiction. She was against marijuana legalization, now she is not. She doesn't even support Medicare for all like Bernie Sanders does. Instead, she supports a public option like Mayor Pete. The reason the public option is actually increasing inequality is because you allow private industries to deny people with severe cases. So then they have to go with the public option, which then backlogs the public option because then they deal with all the severely sick people and all the people who are more than likely, you know, middle class, upper middle class who are not sick, take the private option. The point being, 
she has a history of contradicting herself, which I think I've made abundantly clear up to this point. I'm not surprised that somebody in her campaign had resigned over her what sounds like her lack of morality and her lack of strategy. I don't really feel bad for her. Honestly, I don't. Let me know what you guys think about this. I know a lot of times whenever you talk about someone like Kamala, they'll, they'll have people who say, you know, you don't like her because she's a woman or because she's an African-American or the combination. Well, no, I don't like her because I think she's morally corrupt and I think her policies suck. That's why.